So welcome to this presentation on the topic, uh, predicting the impact of using bots in collaborative software development. I started my PhD 10 months back, that is in August, 2021. And my expected defense date uh, is would be in December, 2024. And my PhD is supervised by Professor uh, Tom Mans and co-supervised by Professor Soheb Ben Taib in the Software Engineering Lab, University of Mons, Belgium. So here, before going into detail much, I'll give I like to give an introduction of social coding platforms and the usage of them. So here we can see an example of a social coding platform, GitHub, and here we can see the the developers can have issues with the software packages, and then we can also have some pull request uh, given by the contributors and uh, going forward for the development. And we can see the commits, and also here we can see the number of contributors that are present in a particular repository that is the software package and here this particular package has 3500 plus the contributors and this is way more in collaborative way as everyone come together for developing a particular software package so this collaboration would happen in uh, the software artifacts such as code uh, writing the code accepting emerging pull request raising issues finding bugs in them so code testing and code uh, code coverage analysis and so on but when this becomes big, especially in bigger software projects, this becomes more uh, more workload for the developers. So they depend on automated uh, scripts that perform this particular uh, uh, tasks, the tedious, repetitive, error prone, and which actually cause more workload for developers. This particular task are performed by these automated scripts. We call them bots. On right, we can see an example of a pull request in GitHub where there is only one human involved and other tasks are all done by bots. Here we can also see an example of a bot waiting for another bot to for completing a particular task. So bots and human developers work hand in hand for developing software in a very collaborative and efficient way. But when, develop, when researchers and practitioners, when they want to analyze the usage of bots and when they want to credit the human contrib best contributor, the best highest contrib highest human contributor, then this becomes a problem as bots are also involved in collab in development. So here we we went ahead. I mean, the, the in the literature we found there are bot identification tools, and the tools that uh, we see here are the current state of the art techniques in uh, different ways. First tool that that I found was with Byman, that is bot identification using GitHub commit messages author names and files associated with the commit. They filtered, uh, they, they perform based on pattern and uh, get the auth get the credit whether the commit, whether the account is a bot or a human. Bodega is a tool developed in my software engineering lab by uh, an author, by the author Medi Gozalde and the team. And so here it works, it works on a machine learning model which, with patterns. And here we can also, uh, it works on, similarity between the comments in issues and pull requests, and also the dispersion ratio between the comments and other features as well. Bodegic, which is another, which is which is the same version as Bodega, but works on Git commit messages. And Bot Hunter, it's a, a latest tool that, is, that was published in 2022. It works in the combination of Byman and Bodega. And they also worked on with uh, feature selection, and they found which features that could be useful for us to consider in classifying whether account is a bot or human. So my first step was to uh, was to learn how these bot detection tools are working and how bot identification is exactly happening in the domain. And then I thought, okay, well, I can contribute a bit more. And this led, this led to me uh, publish a few, uh, few papers in uh, workshops and uh, special issues. Uh, the first one, leveraging predictions from multiple repositories to improve bot detection. So I here I took one of the state of the art technique perform, uh, performing tool, Bodega, which is developed in my lab. And I found the main limitation of Bodega that we have here is uh, Bodega works on repository level, individual repository level. And so if a particular user is perform, is having a human-like behavior, Bodega would predict the particular contributor as human. And in the same account in a different repository, they can uh, exhibit a bot-like behavior. So it will predict as bot in another repository. So this creates some confusion. 
So here, what I did was to, I completely um, leverage the prediction, the, the set of repositories that I'm considering for analysis, so that I have one prediction for the account that I'm considering in the set of repositories. And this, uh, through this, I found that uh, leveraging the leveraging predictions is mainly um, based on majority uh, class that belongs to. And through this basic norm model, I found that is performing better than the uh, Bodega tool, uh, which is currently the state of the art in the field. And the next one was bot detection in GitHub repositories. Here, uh, it's not a, a scientific research, but actually it's a contribution to the community. Uh, here, I found a Grimoire Lab software development tool uh, analytics tool, uh, which has a data collection capability, data enrichment and data visualization. But I found adding a bot detection model as a plugin in uh, the Grimoire Labs pipeline would be more advantageous, as I told earlier, would be advantageous for researchers and practitioners who are studying about the accounts that are present and whether they're bots or human, and this could remove the bias as well. So here I proposed I have proposed a method to integrate Bodega as a pipe as a plugin to their tool, and this could be useful for researchers and practitioners. And the next one is on the accuracy of bot detection techniques. Here we combined five uh, bot detection uh, tools that are present uh, currently in the market, and we combined uh, all the features and create an ensembled model. And still we found that the ensembled model was outperforming all the models that are considered for uh, bot detection. And then uh, the final one is recognizing bot activity in collaborative software development. Here we found GitHub actually, GitHub API uh, actually uh, has a tag has will would tag some certain accounts as bot, but it's missing few accounts and it's not tagging few accounts as bot, and this leads to some confusion as well. So we uh, identified and we identified this problem and we used this all. Uh, tools to say, okay, there are also some bot, uh, bots that are being not identified by GitHub API, and we uh, we developed it further. So this brings to my thesis goal, where the first goal is to analyze the behavior of bots in collaborative software development. And the second goal is to develop AI models to predict their impact in software development. These particular goals, I would like to answer with the help of the data sets uh, that I currently have in, have in hand right now is, uh, one, a collection of GitHub software packages, uh, which is collected by uh, the authors of the Bodega tool. And they have a, a ground truth of for around like uh, 5,000 contributors, among which 527 are bots. And in the recent publication, I found another uh, paper uh, publication where they collected seven years of developer activity in Cargo Package Manager. Cargo package manager is a pack is a uh, is actually uh, collects all the packages corresponding to the Rust uh, programming language and distributes it. So here uh, the packages are hosted in GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, and so on. And concentrating on GitHub and GitLab alone, we they found around three hundred and five bots. So I have the ground truth. And with this, I'll proceed with my study. If more data is required, I will use GitHub uh, GraphQL API for querying further data and for my for my analysis. And with this particular data, in this particular data set, what we found, uh, the bots are may, may very well prevalent. Uh, the presence of bots are very well prevalent. For in GitHub repositories, um, where with at least 200 contributors active, the top star repositories, and with the and they're active between the, the last three months, like October to December 2021, we found uh, bots are among the top contributors itself. And also, we can surprising. It's it's not surprising to see that bots are also top contributors in more than five repositories, and this is how prevalent the bots are. And in Cargo Package Manager as well, uh, I collected the data for the past five years, and then I found uh, bots that are present in multiple repositories as well. So this would be useful for my study, this particular analysis. So to answer my, so this brings to the first goal. To answer the to deal with the first goal of my uh, thesis is to first uh, extract the features that could represent the behavior of bots. Behavior of bots. What does it mean? So here we can have an see an example where it be it can be the number of activities that the bots are doing. And here we can see we can have you have a comparison between bots and humans. Uh, and bots we can see bots are having a median number of activity as one, whereas humans are active, having a median activity of three. And response time between bots and humans. And I took, I took an example of particular bot, a grape bot and a human contributor. And I find that 
the median response time for a bot is around uh, uh, less than just less than five minutes and for a medium time median time for a human to respond is around like 25000 seconds and also detects similarity in the comments posted by bots and humans here we the median uh, similarity between comments is around 92% for the bots and 26% for humans these are not the only uh, behavior there are also be many other behaviors such as um, tagging the developer or uh, sending emails and so on so this so this particular behavior is not only with respect to between humans and bots but also this particular behavior can be differentiated between bots many bots and a particular bot that can be that would be different used in different repositories uh, by this what i mean is suppose if the bots are having a different configuration then they would behave differently in different repositories with the same name itself and it's also possible that bots e evolve and they change their performance over time so i need to also find study the behavior of the bots over time and this would be uh, this would be the main goal and this ends the study on behavior of bots now this brings to my second goal after studying the behavior of the bots i need to develop the ai models to predict their impact impact can be uh, divided into two two types like positive impact and negative impact by the bots positive impact is nothing but they are really assisting the developers they are very autonomous and they are really doing efficient task in the, the repositories whereas negative impact could be frequently posting comments they are tagging the developers frequently they are also information overload that is sending too much information that the developer might not need is also considered to be negative impact and uh, always um, like sending notifications to developer during the working working hours and so on so these are some examples of negative impact but not limited to this and so after uh, i'll after this understanding what okay, what are the impacts and what are the behavior and well, and to understand the behavior, uh, the link between the behavior and the impact i will i will go to the developers community and conduct with the help of surveys i will ask them what do they really uh, consider uh, like a negative which behavior they consider as negative impact which behavior as positive impact and which one actually uh, they don't consider actually they don't even consider as a behavior to measure impact so i'll reach out to the developers community to do this and in the survey i would, that would be a form of a questionnaire and here i would uh, give a magnitude so that they can so that the the developers can rate like a between a percentage of uh, impact instead of just being like binary of positive or negative having a magnitude would be very useful to know which bot is having how much percentage of positive and how much percentage of negative impact in their developers and to to know the impact i would give provide them the different scenarios of bot suppose if same bot is having different configuration that would be different scenarios or i'll be considering that as different bots and the developers would know the developers say this particular behavior is uh, negative and this particular behavior is positive so after the qualitative analysis and all the all the uh, analysis done with the qualitative with the developers uh, community i will proceed to define metrics to quantitatively measure the impact so this is to tie uh, disconnect the uh, study from the developers community because in future when the bots are evolving like when, when new bots are coming in every each and every time i cannot be reaching to the developers community and asking them for their review and their insight on the bot so i need to define a metric to measure okay this is how the impact can be measured and this is how the behavior is measured can be measured as a negative or positive impact and uh, the final score could be a percentage of impact uh, being suppose from uh, impact can be from 0 to 1 less than 0.5 is negative and more than 0.5 is positive this could be uh, the scale uh, after that and finally to predict the impact i would develop the ai models this could be binary classifier and a probabilistic model and to evaluate my data i'll be mostly depending on the historical data that is i'll go back in time for example i'll go to december uh, uh, january 2020 and from there i will say okay i'm going to predict what is the, what is the impact and being in january 2020 i will know uh, what is the real impact that is created so by this i can evaluate what is the uh, how and evaluate and improve the performance of my models and this is what uh, my thesis goal is mainly going to cover up this is the final goal of my thesis and the 
intermediate results and the final results and all these study results would be published uh, in one or two of all the three conferences in uh, uh, that we see on the screen icc cnr and msr and the intermediate results would be published in again in uh, some conferences or workshops uh, to reach out to the community and ask for their 